Today, I want to talk to you guys about living water. Living water. Let me ask you this. Are you thirsty? So Dr. Chuck, no, I ain't thirsty. I done, I done drunk my water for the day. I drunk my Gatorade, you know, whatever, whatever. But I'm not talking about physical thirst. See, everybody is thirsty for something. I'm going to repeat that. Everybody is thirsty for something. And I'm not talking about physical thirst. Some of you guys are thirsty for a husband. Some of you guys are thirsty for a spouse. I remember hearing my daughter say, when you put out these, um, trying to think of the ro a nice word to say, these certain images on social media, you're putting out a thirst trap. <laughs> Some of y'all women, and maybe some of y'all men got these thirst traps out there. But at the end of the day, beloved, we are all thirsty for something. It may not be a spouse. It can be for a business. If it's not a business, it can be for a home. It can be for a bigger home. It can be for a car, a bigger car. It could be thirsty to be out of debt. Everybody is thirsty for something. And you remember when you hear the Sprite commercial, what does it say? obey your thirst well let me caution you it depends on what you're thirsty for and let me tell you there was a woman in, cha in John chapter 4 was thirsty for something she was thirsty and looking for love in all the wrong places some of you guys are like that men women some of you guys are just looking for love in all the wrong places and Jesus was going on a trip he had to go through an area called Samaria and Samaria was a place that the Jews did not go through because they did not deal with Samaritans. Samaritans were considered half-breeds. Samaritans was considered way beneath their level. But Jesus said, I have to go through Samaria. Why? It's because he knew he had to meet somebody that needed a taste of living water. So he met this woman. Thank God that we don't even know this woman's name. This Bible says he met a woman at the well. And she came to the well at the worst time of the day, the hottest part of the day. Why? It's because everybody in the village knew that she had five husbands already. She got divorced five times. And the man that she was with, she wasn't even married to him. So she was embarrassed because she knew that people were going to talk bad about her. That's why she actually came to the well in the hottest part of the day because she knew that nobody would be there. Have you ever been there before? Have you ever did something so embarrassing? You just want to crawl on the rock or you want to wait till everybody leave? If you say no, you're lying to yourself. We have all been in that place of embarrassment for something that we did or did not do. But yet Jesus came to her in the moment of her need. He actually walked up to the woman and Jesus wasn't even supposed to talk to a Samaritan. Let me, let me rephrase that. The Jews were not supposed to talk to a Samaritan, but Jesus was unlike the Jews. Jesus was all about bringing healing and deliverance. I'm going to repeat that. Jesus was all about bringing healing and deliverance. Is there any area in your life where you need healing and a deliverance? Do you need healing in that relationship? Do you need healing in your body? Do you need healing with an addictive behavior, whether it's drugs, whether it's alcohol, whether it's pornography? Let me encourage you, beloved. Jesus is a healer and a deliverer. It doesn't matter if you've done it one time or a billion, trillion times. Jesus wants to deliver you from anything that's holding you back from being great. Let me repeat that. Jesus want to heal and deliver you from anything that's holding you back and being great. And Jesus has created all of us to be great. Let me repeat that. Jesus has created all of us to be great. In fact, say it with me and say it with your chest. I was created to be great. One more time. I was created to be great. And I wasn't created to be great by myself. I need someone to help me to become great. And that's why Jesus came. Jesus came to deliver you from all of your sins, past, present, and future, so that you can walk in divine greatness. And that's what he did for this woman at the well. So he engaged in a conversation and he said, lady, I'm thirsty. 
And she probably looked at him, ooh, I can quench your thirst, Jesus. You know, I can see her shimmering her bosom in his face. He said, no, 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 no. No, shawty, slow it down, shawty. I'm not thirsty for that. I'm thirsty for a drink. And he engaged her. And he looked, she looked him up and down and be like, where's your bucket? <laughs> And I can imagine Jesus say, man, I don't need no bucket. You know who I am? Man, I am the bucket and the water. Oh, my goodness. I'm the bucket and the water. So she said, well, who are you? And she said, well, let me tell you. He said, let me tell you about yourself. You know, I understand that you had five husbands. So you divorced five times. And the man that you are with right now, is, you are not married to him. And she was like, wait a minute, how you know all this? And he said, just because I love you. See, Jesus knows everything about us, but he doesn't judge us. He loves us even while we're in our mess. Oh my goodness. Holy Spirit, let them taste and see how good you are. Did you hear what I just said? Jesus knows where you are and nothing you have done, nothing that you are doing, nothing that you will do will keep his love away from you. My goodness, how refreshing that is for a thirsty soul. So Jesus told her, you know what? You can go and get this water, but you only gonna thirst is only be quenched for one day at one moment but you can drink of the living water and you will never have to thirst again you know what she said she said hey give me that living water and jesus was like that's all i needed that's all i needed from you woman at the well is you to ask and i will give you the living water and likewise, not only with the woman at the well, beloved, Jesus is waiting for us to ask him the same thing. I'm thirsty. Jesus, give me the living water. And you will never thirst again. And no, it's not talking about physical thirst. It's talking about something deeper than that. A thirst that will quench you not only in this life, but even in eternity. When you invite Jesus in your life, when you're thirsty in your area, and we all got areas that we're thirsty in, he will quench that thirst, not only for now, but even in the lifetime. The Bible says that when we accept Jesus Christ, we have a artesian well builds up inside of us. You know what an artesian well is? An artesian well is a well that actually has pressure just automatically and it pushes the water up. And you know what that Etesian well that lives inside of us now? It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that can quench all of our thirst because he lives inside of us. And some of us are gifted in the area. Let me repeat that. All of us are gifted in that area to bring the Holy Spirit out from inside of us and that can flow outside of us. Yes, we are all gifted with speaking in tongues as a believer in Christ Jesus he has given us the gift of the Holy Spirit to speak in another language and it doesn't mean to be scary it doesn't mean to be spooky pooky it's just another spiritual tool you have in your tool belt to fight the enemy you say well Dr. Show, well why do I have to speak in tongues well you don't have to but if someone's giving you another weapon to fight the enemy and to be victorious in this life, why would you not take it? Just like if you're thirsty and someone offer you a cool water or drink, why wouldn't you drink it? Well, likewise, when we have Jesus in our life, we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. He's our wisdom. He's our counselor and he's our guide. And when we ask God, to give us another spiritual language, we can pray in an area that we don't even know nothing about. We can pray for somebody and not know anything about their situation, but the Holy Spirit prays for us and can give answers to that prayer immediately. You say, well, Dr. Short, well, how do you know? It's because I received that gift and I'm just like you, beloved. I did not believe 
in speaking in tongues. I'm like, man, this is weird. This is spooky. Until I ask God, I say, God, I want to have all the gifts that you are giving out so I can be victorious in this world. So I can help other people be victorious in that world. So I can help other people tap into their greatness. And I remember I was attending World Changes Church, Creflo Dollar, of almost 20 years ago. And I had a buddy with me, he was in the music industry. And this guy did not care nothing about God that I knew of, but he liked the ladies. <laughs> so he went down there and I'm like, hey, Lord, if this guy gives his life to you, I'm gonna go down front and ask for the gift of speaking in tongues. But I knew he wasn't gonna do it. But guess what? He said, man, I feel convicted. I wanna give my life to the Lord. I said, oh, okay, here we go. It's showtime. It's showtime. So I went down there and um, everybody, you know, went down there for different things, prayer, giving a life to the Lord, etc. I went down there because I wanted the gift of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. So we went down there and once we went down there, um, we had an opportunity to get, you know, separated in a room in the back. And I remember a lady came up to me and she said, well, you know what, this is God's will, not only for you, for everybody to have this gift. Man, you want this gift to be victorious in this life. So I'm like, what do I do? She said, well, I'm gonna pray in my heavenly language, I'm gonna lay my hand on your shoulder and I want you to just, just thank God, thank God for life and just thank God. And if anything comes out, don't be afraid, just let it flow. Just like water downhill. I said, sure. And she just started, you know, and it was a very smooth, it wasn't anything aggressive. And she started praying in her language, you know, saying thing. It was just like, and I didn't know what she was saying. I was like, at the same time, I was like, Lord, thank you for sitting in Jesus. Lord, thank you for my life. Lord, I just submit my life to you. Lord, I just thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. And I was, I was saying, thank you, Lord, all of a sudden, my language start coming out. Mo shoro do boko ba ba ba. See it and it just start pouring out, pouring out, pouring out, pouring out to the point I just started crying. You know, snot coming out my nose, and actually I I blacked out. And I looked around, and no one was around but were her. And she was like, "Congratulations, you have that gift already inside of you." But just like a baby, a baby is not gonna learn a sentence overnight. It's gonna learn one sound. And that one sound turns into a word. And that word turns into a sentence. And that's what you need to do. You need to practice that one sound. I'm like, that sound sounds weird. It was like, it, 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 you couldn't even spell. It was like a, just a, literally a syllable. She said, practice that syllable and pray. And God's going to add to that language. And that's what I did. I practiced that syllable. God added word. And God added the language. A language that in the natural, it doesn't make any sense. It sounds like gibberish, but in the spiritual realm, it's a perfect prayer to two places. It's a perfect prayer to God for whatever goes on inside of you. And it can be a perfect prayer for somebody else with whatever going on inside of them. And they don't have to even tell you. So back to the story. So this woman, Jesus frankly told her that he was the Messiah. And she was like, wow. He told me everything that I did, yet he did not condemn me. He gave her the gift of no condemnation. And guess what she did? She became an evangelist. She didn't even go to cemetery school. She didn't get an approval from no deacon board. No, she just went and started proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's God's desire for all of us. We don't have to go to deacon board. We don't have to go to... Uh, you know, to, to uh, cemetery school, seminary school, and do all that, man. When Jesus comes in our life and he does something so miraculous, man, we want to tell somebody else about him. And I just want to encourage you today, those of us who are believers, people need to hear the good news. People need a drink of the living water that will quench their thirst. See, physical water only can quench our thirst for a moment. But Jesus' living water will quench our thirst for eternity. All right. Hope you got something from this message. I love you. If you got something, like I say, click like, share this message, and go and check out my YouTube page, Dr. Rico Short, Suave DMD, and get encouraged so you can be an encouragement to somebody else. All right. Love y'all. Grace life.